Welcome to No Life Gaming Podcast. Jumping in, jumping at you, coming at you with hopefully a shorter show than normal. We're trying to keep things nice and tight for you. Make sure you head over to our website, nolife.digital. That's all you need to type. I know a bunch of you are heading over to the website. I can see the traffic coming in. And also make sure you follow us over on Twitter and Instagram at No Life Digital. I really need to figure out a way to update those Insta- the, the Instagram account much more often. I need to use that more as like that sort of meme account. I just keep forgetting. Anyways, what's up, dudes? How y'all doing? Chilling. Uh, back from vacation. How was it? Tennessee, right? Nashville. Dude, the city's freaking awesome. I, I really had a blast. I had a, bu- a, bu- a buddy that lives there, and he says it's his favorite city ever. The like it's not it's weird because like you know in Philly is like there's things to do but there's long stretches of places where you have to move to get to things to do. Mm. In Nashville, it's like all right, here's Lower Broadway. Here is a stretch of like five blocks on one street where there's sixty bars, the Bridgestone Arena, and like another like maybe mile walk on the walking bridge and you're at the stadium for the, the uh, football stadium. 60 bars in five blocks. It's, it's gotta be at least I it's the way they have it set up is like some bars are like two to one building where like, like Jason Aldean's bar is the second floor, like the second floor. Oh, and right, all, right. But the first bar on the ground floor is tequila Cowboys. Right. And every bar has live music. They're all cover bands, um, yeah, but they're yeah, all the like, music scene. There is awesome. Yeah, and like yeah, it's a lot of country, but with all the Phillies, like the Eagles fans down there, there was a lot of like Hall and Oates, Springsteen being played, because you know people request or pay for like requests. Right. Um, but the food was amazing. You didn't throw it out. Best pulled pork I ever had. There you go. I, I, like, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of Kentucky. I just saw. <laughs> I just saw Barstool Sports last night, and it was either Kentucky or Tennessee, but they just had uh, – they went to a pizza joint and got kicked out and gave it a zero because it was ice cold. Yeah, I saw, I saw that. <laughs> yeah, no, um, like, you get pizza from there? He was like, this is the <laughs> worst mistake you ever yeah. made, bro. <laughs> no, even, that, even Nashville, I, don't, I wouldn't get pizza. Like, you're getting barbecue. Um, the pulled board was fantastic, and the price is, like, really good. Like, Oh, the, yeah. The, Dude, the houses went, around you, there are gorgeous. I had a friend just move there. Gorgeous, and it was like two hundred thousand dollars, which is yeah, like, nothing. Like, let me say this: like the alcohol is kind of expensive because there's a big sales wow. tax on it. It's like thirty percent tax. So, like a Jack Ouch. and Coke is like ten bucks, but at the same time, ten dollars is getting you a pulled pork sandwich that's like super good <laughs> with two sides included. At like you know a nice sit like a, a sit down bar, but like the bar food, like it's just good. Like in Philly, you could like what ten dollars is going to get you the cheesesteak, and I like just the cheesesteak for ten bucks. Yeah, <laughs> and you want fries? Anywhere you want fries stuff. with it? You can pay another four dollars. Anywhere northeast is like that. You want a soda with it? Oh, well, you're paying another at least three fifty. It's because the rent's so yeah, it's mostly. High. <laughs> so yeah. Is it too damn high? <laughs> we went to Hattie B's in Midtown, and like I got like a breast and a wing with two sides. And a drink for like sixteen bucks, and it was phenomenal. It's a little spicy for my taste, mm. but um, like I got the medium, which was quote unquote warming up. Mouth was all like tingling on fire, <laughs> but uh, really good. No, like it was a blast. Um, all the music, the bars. You didn't get a Nashville hot chicken. I got the Nashville hot chicken. Well, I got the medium. <laughs> I don't think I could have done hot. I don't think I could have gone for the hot, like uh, the, the hot the, spice. Or, that would have destroyed yeah. me. I got, I, I got one not from Nashville, but there's a restaurant here that's like Nashville barbecue, and they make a hot chicken, and it's just what it's just the hot chicken. You ordered it, and I got it for lunch one day, and I'm like, it can't be that hot, and it looks really good, so I ordered it. It was the fucking spiciest food I've ever had in my life, it it and I good. eat a lot of spicy it's food. Not- it's not hot chicken if it doesn't come with pickles, though. Oh, of course. It had pickles on it. Yeah. It was so good. And then you get the piece of bread underneath where it's soaking up all that spice. Dude, the best pickles, so in my good. opinion, and I don't see them often, are the bread and butter pickles. Do you guys ever yeah. have bread and butter pickles? Oh, yeah. They're the best, but I don't ever see them like on sandwiches. Have you ever had fried pickles? Yeah, of course. Fried pickles are legit when you're drinking and you just need something to eat. You get some fried pickles. Pickles are just dope. They're just... 
a, a dope I spent 22 years your drink. of my life eating pickles. <laughs> just just get a pickle and throw it in your whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> the kosher no, I, know, I know someone who used to do that, called them pickleback shots. No, they, yeah, they, they, they make picklebacks, but that's not yeah. whiskey. <laughs> I think it's oh, no, they always did it with it. whiskey. Oh, that's crazy. No, they did it with whis- whiskey and pickle juice. It was actually pretty decent. Yeah, yeah use the uh, pickle juice as the chaser. Yeah. I mean, then again, like, if you want to make good chicken, just brine the, the chicken breast with pickle juice. Yeah, any- anything really acidic It's like that. really good, like, with pickle juice. Like- so vinegar? Yeah. And some cucumber? Yeah. <laughs> I need to. Dude, I grow my own cucumbers. I think next year I'm gonna start doing like my own pickles. Oh, you just it's, pop them it's in good. a jar, mason Easy. jar, fill yeah. them up with vinegar. Yeah, a little bit of salt. You gotta figure out how to a make little bit bread, of sugar. bread and butter pickles though. I don't know what they do with that. I guess it's sugar, a lot more sugar than normal. It's probably that sounds about right actually. They're just, they're just sweeter. They're like candy pickles. They're awesome. All right, enough of the fucking pickle talk. <laughs> Have we been playing anything new recently? Uh, I've just been no. playing Dragon Quest. Um, I finally beat the game, but then I found out that I didn't beat the game. Well, sounds like Dragon Quest. Sounds like yeah, an energy RPG. There is a there is a twenty plus hour post game story, uh, and that's where the difficulty ramps up. So like even on level fifty, I got into like my first like semi boss fight and got bodied. So it's time to grind. There you go. I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting on the hype train for Fallout seventy six. Did you see the gameplay footage? Yeah. Looks and like, dope. it's it's not the fall that I'm used to, but I have I watched someone play through three hours who got invited to it, who I do trust. And he's a lot more into single player gameplay and even he was coming away very happy. Yeah. So I'm like, the more I've been watching it and the amount they've put into this game, I'm excited. Cause like, he's a, he's a lore nut. So he was really worried when uh, they announced, you know, it's going to be all a multiplayer game or like all online. Uh, within three hours, I think he came out with like an hour and a half of content that was just things written and uh, tapes recorded. That's cool. And like he made it through like this much of the map and the map's like this fucking big. Oh, really? Yeah, like he barely made it out of the entrance zone. And, like, the map's fucking four times bigger than f- any Fallout or Elder Scrolls game. So is there, like, an overarching story in the game? That's the weird thing is it doesn't sound like it. Like, there, it, there is to unlock stuff. So what's the point? To just level up? But I think it's, yeah, I think it's mostly to level up and make whatever you want out of the apocalypse. Yeah. It's a, it's a sandbox. Yeah. It's okay. totally sandbox, but it does sound like there is a lot of stories if you're looking for them. Like but like as lore. towards right, but as towards of like objectives, as in like go do this. No, there's like none of that. I'm not a huge like Fallout fan, but when I see Fallout versus Elder Scrolls, and I'm more of an Elder Scrolls fan, it definitely feels even in the older ones from what I've seen and played. Elder Scrolls always has that nice arching story. And then there's a few side things here and there that they're short, uh, but they're not like super important versus the overall story. Whereas like Fallout doesn't have that huge overarching story, but it's got a lot of really good smaller stories that you can explore with each town has a very deep history and a lot of different things like that, where I think because... I think both games serve different purposes. I mean, I might, I might that's, actually that's pull do another Fallout Four playthrough. Because, like the the way Fallout is, yeah, it's it's Fallout's always been to choose your own adventure to be able to have like that huge overarching story. Like you're not gonna be saving the world from oblivion, or you're not, you know, gonna be killing a, like the big bad dragon, like because. It's always been I mean, about for, like making a badass apocalypse survivor dude, you know. Yeah, because like all of all of them have had basically at a minimum two or three endings, and like most of them have like six or seven, so like different types of endings you can get. So they've always been a lot more like, what do you want to do? I think the genre also a little bit defines that because like high fantasy really plays itself to the the large story to the world threatening dragon you need to bring down or stop oblivion where yeah. the science fiction slash post apocalyptic 
I mean, the world's already kind of been fucked. Yeah. It's, what do you do with but, the characters and the stories after the world's fucked? Which is why why this one's interesting because there's no NPCs other than enemies. But like, it seems like they're definitely still making a story out of it that I'm interested in and want to tr- kind of find. Because like the amount I have seen of it is like there are some really cool stories, and that's what it's always drawn me to Fallout more. Is while it is smaller stories, like a lot of those smaller stories, they usually come together to make the world feel more cohesive to me. Like the store, the main storyline itself is usually not as good or as cohesive. But like if you're actually going in and like I'm in this town and you start finding out, finding the little things and piecing together like what happened to this town and why these raiders are here or versus these raiders, things like that, like the world does feel more complete than like Moth to Save the Dragons. Yeah. Yeah, it looks pretty dope. It's pretty dope. I'm getting I'm getting excited about it too. I kinda wanna check it out. I might play Fallout 4 playthrough like I was saying before. I might give it another go. Alright. Um I was i I've been playing um this game Dragalia Lost on my mobile phone. Have you guys heard of it? No. Yeah, you mean the lowest grossing income game that uh, Nintendo has released thus far? Yeah. It's not doing well. <laughs> it's Well, it's free, for one, and I haven't spent any money on it. I don't plan on spending any money on it. But as a mobile game, it doesn't feel like a Nintendo game. You know what I mean? Like, it just doesn't... Doesn't sound like one either. It's like It's like this sort of like jrpg grind core um you know mobile loot fest thing and it's kind of fun it's it's got me hooked it's good for like quick playthroughs but it just doesn't feel like a nintendo game it's kind of disappointing because i was having fun like they just those kind of games they hook you in the beginning and as soon as you waste all of like that in-game sort of launch currency then you just have to like grind for hours and hours and it's just not interesting and i, I hate that I hate that about mobile games and I want them to change that model because it's just not a sustainable model in my opinion. Uh, but overall I do like kind of Nintendo getting more into mobile games. You know, they need, uh, I wanted more like Mario run style stuff, but we got this game. And, uh, is this like a first party title doobie? Do you know? Uh, what? It's like, I know it's an original title. It's not like, it's not, like Fire Emblem, where it's on the Fire Emblem franchise. Or yeah, this is like a complete Mario. It, this is, and I think that's one of the reasons why it's not as popular and not as money making for Nintendo, is that it essentially is a what, what I it's a new mobile IP, hmm. and I think that's a that's a weakness for it, because with Fire Emblem, you already have an established fan base that is you know, you can use to get money off of. How well <laughs> did Super Mario Run do? Do you know? Well, Super Mario Run was weird because it wasn't technically a freemium game. No, you yeah, could get the first pay. like three levels, but you did have to pay ten dollars for the actual game, and it didn't do that well. Mm. Fire Emblem is, is 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 definitely the most lucrative one they have going. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure if Mario is two or three, and I know, if, well, they, of course, Animal Crossing is in there. As either of the two or three. I think that one's second. Fuck that game. Hey, man, they're bringing Animal Crossing to the Switch anyway, so it doesn't matter. No one's yeah, going to play it. Fuck that fucking game. game but uh, so I know there's, there's been it's rumors for time. a while. There's been rumors for a while of a Mario Kart mobile game. They which don't... I guess would be like a temple run, if anything. Well, they do. It. That's what I'm saying. Like they, The game runs so good because you can play with one hand. And I love that about they know how to make a mobile game. It's just that... I don't want a freemium model. Give me the Mario Run sort of template where I have to pay $10. I wouldn't bucks. say Nintendo knows how to make a, a mobile game. I would say DNA knows how to make a mobile game Yeah, whoever using Nintendo game, IP. Whoever made this fucking game did a good job because it does. it's basically an action RPG and you control it with one hand. <clears throat> and they have all these little weird features and things that you could do to help kind of play through it with one hand. And I find it just nice to play, you know? And there's a nice, like, JRPG kind of corny-ass story where it's, like, the fucking princess gets lost or some shit. 
Dude, these JRPGs need better stories, man. I'm getting sick of the same old stupid fucking story over and over again. The over dramatic fucking text voice act. Like, what are they doing? Is that the is that what I you're subjected to at every JRPG? Is the same sort of like, oh no, they're taking me. I boiled JRPGs down to a formula that is it's it's not a hundred percent, but it is very. It's very trope based, and, and that is usually kill God. Kill name, God. Name me a lot of JRPGs, and you're usually killing a god or a godlike figure. Oh yeah, and this one you're killing. You have to kill this godlike figure. He's That's like the this... final boss. Is almost always like <laughs> he's like this Final Fantasy mind. six. Yeah. Uh, well, final, like let's say even Final Fantasy four. The JRPG. A, a tree. <laughs> That is controlling the magic, so it's like a god of magic. The JRPG community cannot stand for this anymore. They need Final better Fantasy stories. Six. Kefka is god in that at the end of that game. Final Fantasy VII, you literally fight a one-winged angel. It's just everyone wants to kill one god and just play hundreds of hours in doing so every different game with different characters every time. Yeah, you. Yeah, uh, like I said, man, JRPGs really boil down to the trope characters. Who's the damsel in distress? Yep, I got that's the, got that. Oh, it's got the it all, hero, dude. the hero with a hidden backstory. Like you know, oh, he's really a prince. He didn't know because he was abandoned as a kid. Dude, this is literally the story of this game. <laughs> that you're I saying. haven't played this game yet, so I'm just these are tropes. This is literally the story. Anime does the same thing. It's all based on tropes. It's basically, this prince. Who his sister, who's like the princess, gets taken by the father, who is corrupted by an evil spirit, and now he's super extremely powerful, destroying all the cities, and you need to go save the princess and also save your kingdom from your crazy father. Who's a god? Who's a god? See? 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 Yep. Family issues, that's a trope. Yep. Um, there you go. I'm telling wow. you, just go on and go. I think the website's what? TVTropes.com. And just look up any JRPG that you can find and just read the tropes. Just yeah. if you want a good time dump and see how how much like formulaic some JRPGs can be. How does the JRPG go, community stand for this? That's my question. It comes down it really comes down to how well the characters are written. No. Because there are some really bland JRPGs like Star Ocean 5. They're all bland. Horribly bland. It, it is the safest, most bland. RPG. Hey, I, I got a question. Is Link or is Zelda a JRPG? It is not a JRPG. It is an action adventure game. Okay. It might have RPG elements, but specifically. Well, what about the story? Is it a classic JRPG like story? It kind of is, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, it has its, it's tropes. It's technically with a silent JRPG. protagonist. There's always the trope, you know, Link always, Link almost always wears uh, green. Breath of the Wild changed that where he wears blue. Um, he wears whatever you give him. There's, yeah, there's always, you know, there's almost always dungeons. Breath of the Wild really changed the, the formula up. But, like, games from, like, I would say, like, especially when it became 3D Zelda, or even just a Link to the Past, the trope essentially was find item like X, to access Dungeon X to get item Y that accesses Dungeon Y, it was very progression based on that. Where Breath of the Wild was kind of like, all right, here, yeah, two things. There's no, the only trope is Ganondorf or Ganon's the final fight and Zelda's a princess that so you need to rescue. You did it. That's you it. did it. All right. That was kind of Moving on to the news. Sony canceled PSX. Why? Not enough announcements. I was just say they blew their load at E3. They, they blew their load. They definitely blew their load at E3. And I really think, I, I, I think this is going to lead to the rampant rumor that, that E3 2019 is going to be, if not E3 2019, then PlayStation Experience 2019 will be the unveiling of the PS5. Hmm. That is the rumors. I can and and it's. Skipping, um, I'm guessing things. 2020. Yeah, it's because it, they're guessing 2020. Well, basically, release, release 2020, but yeah. unveiling the system right. or even mentioning its teraflops or whatever they want to say about it before. before yeah, and, and they can either do it to D3 and blow their load, or they can hold it off for PlayStation Experience. But I feel like E3, they would blow their load on that. 
and then at PlayStation Experience be like, hey, here's games coming to the PS5. Or they can just yeah. announce it at E3 and actually have it playable at PSX. Right, yeah. for release in 2020. Because that, that's also the rumor is based off of the hardware side because a lot of people are thinking that we're not going to see seven nanometer Vega graphics cards from AMD because a lot of AMD's work seems to be done around system on a chip or like slightly customized things like they've been doing with Apple and Xbox and PlayStation 4. So like some of their last chips were made for PlayStation 4. So they're not thinking we're going to see the next gen Navi cards because that's being made for PS5. I'm wondering, I really am wondering because, you know, Xbox and Microsoft, like, like PlayStation and Microsoft right now are kind of tied at the hip. And I say that because it it really comes down to the games because a lot of the architecture is the same. A lot of the stuff inside the consoles is the same. Not everything is. You know, you can't argue that the X is definitely more powerful than the Pro. But I'm really wondering what the next batch of consoles they come out with, whatever they call them, whatever they are, how similar in architecture they are, or if they're going to start to see a separation. Mm-hmm. I'm interested in also in just... Like, what's next? We know Red Dead's coming out. We know Last of Us 2. Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk. No, Cyberpunk, I could easily see being a game that's like, it plays on the PS4 Pro, but you're going to want to get it on the PS5. No, I don't. I see a PS5. It's just from what they're showing at, just what they're showing on the, sh- the show floor, it just seems to be just too graphically intensive. It does, but I still can totally, I'm, I'm kind of agree. I'm tempted to go with Doobie. I can totally see that as, like, that's the big PS5 launch title. Like, you can get it on both, but, like, really for the PS5. They've done it plenty of times. When PS4 came out, they had plenty of games that you could play on PS4 or also play on, like, uh, PS3. Um, Well, I know we got it super late, but Persona 5, it started as a PS3 game, and then it came out on PS4 and PS3. So, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if um, if Cyberpunk is able to play on both, but you're going to want to play it on the new console. You're not going to want to play it on the, on the 4, on the PS4 or PS4 Pro, because it's going to run, like it'll run, but it's not going to run the way you want it to run. It just won't look as good. It'll be it won't look as good. It won't, I mean, the frame rate might have a little few issues here and there, might be some dips. Yeah. Because the game looks just, it just looks ridiculous. I mean, it... Uh, the next step for play, for the next generation of consoles, it has to be 4K 60 frames per second because they're doing 4K 30 right now. So it's got to be 4K 60. There's nowhere else they can go. It has to hit 4K 60 frames per second. I don't see what I don't see any other way for them to ever sell a new console to anyone. You know. So what else is there in a new console that you would want other than the best graphical fidelity at 4K? 60 frames per second at least like it's the new consoles are just gonna be incremental upgrades anyway you know they might be a little bit more spec power just to to push i mean 4k a lot of people still don't even have 4k tvs and i guarantee you that's not going to change when the ps5 comes out so it's kind of like um i mean if the ps5 comes out in 2020 i'm really interested in seeing what the prices for 4k tvs are going to look like they're Both good this now. Black Friday and next year's Black Friday. Yeah, they're pretty good now before Black Friday. Um, this Black Friday, you'll be able to get like at least like a 35-inch for a couple hundred bucks at least. You know, so – and that's a, you know, that's a nice size TV for a lot of people. So I, I think uh, we're – I mean, we've had 4K for what, five years, five, six years now? <laughs> it's time to – Get everyone on the 4K train. Get these 1080Ps out. That way we can move on to 8K, 12K. How long, how long did it take 1080P to become the norm? Not long because it was went from 720 to 1080, and that's a. It just went from HD to you know a slightly higher HD. I just remember like CRTs, and then we jumped to like 
LCDs and then LED flat screens. The problem was the bandwidth. Were huge, like you, they had the gigantic backs. We also got to remember the problem was the bandwidth because everything was running through that coaxial cable. Or yeah, it, sure. it was just a different bandwidth wave than what we have now. Now everything's just online. Everything's through Ethernet. <clears throat> All right. Um, Telltale's Walking Dead will be completed with some help. Interesting. I mean, I'm surprised they're it. finishing it. Yeah, they're just trying to milk it. Trying to get the last. I guess, it, I guess there's and... a contract that they have to finish it. You know. It doesn't. I mean, also makes sense who they're working with. They're working with Skybound, which is Robert Kirkman's group. Oh, but really? The creator of Walking Dead, so... He needs to just kill the Walking Dead. He needs to stop. I, the, the show's got to be ending soon. I'm just, like, it's just dumb. <laughs> this, the quote here says, we can't lose Andrew Lincoln and Clementine in the same year. Well, you definitely are going to lose them. Uh, the show, I watched the first episode of the, of the newest season, the last season with Rick Grimes. Terrible. Terrible. The last season. It's just not. It should be the last season. Not the last season of crimes, just make it the last season. I mean, they tell you what. Kill it. It started off, and he was, it started off pretty brutal. So it gives me some hope. Maybe they'll take some extra liberties with the show, but we'll see. We also know Norman Reedus never wants to leave the show. He loves doing the show so much. Probably because he makes millions and millions of dollars from it. But He's going he's gonna to be making a lot more money when, uh, <laughs> once that game comes out. Uh, Death Stranding? Yeah, you know he's going to be getting royalties on that thing. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, all right, and we also have rumors, suppliers, and others with direct knowledge of the plan say that a new Switch model will release in the second half of 2019. Now, this is more interesting than a new PS5, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, we're not, I, I, we shouldn't be surprised. If they, I know they say that it's, it's a home console that's also a handheld, but if it's anything like a handheld, it's going to follow the 3DS line, which is nothing wrong with that. My only issue is if they pull a new... And first of all, don't call it the new, the new Nintendo Switch. That would be an awful idea because we already had the new 3DS, which was a terrible idea. Yeah. And then on that, it only had, I think, four or six games that were released that were only playable on the new 3DS. Don't I don't want to see games that come out that are going to be like, now you can only play this game on the upgraded Switch. You have to get the new Switch to play this game. I don't want to see that. Yeah. But I do think we're going to start seeing more special edition consoles, just like the 3DS got a ton of special editions. Um, the first one coming out is is the, the Super Smash Brothers special edition console. And I feel like you're going to start seeing more of those. Um, but this... I don't, I'm not sure what they're going to do. I wonder if the upgraded is just a basic upgrade where it's like, oh, here's maybe a, a bit of a bigger screen or here's a bit of a better battery life. I don't know what the pricing is going to be on it. Or is it going to, are they going to drop the switch basic switch console down and then keep that new switch at 300? Or are they just going to go, Hey, 350 for the new switch over the old switch. I'm so I mean, it's interesting. There, Cause they're, the screen on the Switch now is plastic, so they're gonna put like a nice screen on it. Maybe it's, maybe they do like a high quality Switch where it's not made of plastic. Maybe it's got like a nice aluminum feel to it. Uh, the the screen is a higher resolution. Maybe it's a 1080p screen. They put you know the the new chips in there, and it's just a little bit faster. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with the size as well. Keep the same. Yeah, I was size. gonna say. If if they get a new, if they're gonna this, have to keep the same size because they're gonna have to keep the same Joy Cons, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, definitely, yeah. Um, they maybe just make the bezel without, smaller without making it feel weird. That would that would be what they have to do. Um, and the dock size as well. Right. Um, I mean, I could see an upgrade on the quality, and I definitely am interested in seeing if there's gonna be a new chipset. Are we gonna be seeing uh, the the like what Tegra X two? Right, I don't know. We're we gonna see a new Tegra. Like Nvidia has been working really close with Nintendo. Yeah, and I feel like we know that the Tegra, the first one that was in the Switch, wasn't a custom chip because it had a lot of the same uh, faults and a lot of the same ways to hack it. And that's another reason I think our Switch revision is coming is because of the hacking scene. There's a lot of things getting hacked on that Switch fast, and that. Really? Like they're working quick. 
Yeah. Uh, I think Super Mario Party was already hacked. I can see that. Because, I mean, it is kind of old at this point, actually. Yeah. Like, it's so, not yeah. even that quick. It's just, like, they've figured it out. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's a tablet. Like, it's the and dopest Nintendo, tablet, but it's going to happen. Nintendo is great with, uh, like, um, uh, how was it? Compression? Like, they're amazing. What do you mean compression. the new Mario Party got hacked? Like, you can get it without buying it? No, I don't. I'm not. I think I think people have like already hacked like the game, like to cheat and to stuff. To cheat in the game, okay. I think so. Yeah, they have to fix I, that. Yeah, the revision like is definitely going to solve the the exploits that the Tegra one has if they do use a new chip. They're going to have to because that chip's like, old. That chip is yeah. old. Like the, the seeing a new chipset made custom for Nintendo by Nvidia working with Nintendo, I think will help a lot. And a lot of the um, optimizations. Yeah. And the, so, yeah. I, I just and wonder Nvidia, if that's going to change any of the development at all. And therefore, Nvidia is making a killing because the Tagger originally was like regarded as kind of a not only failure, but it wasn't a money maker like they wanted it to be. And then their deal with Nintendo and the Switch has like made the Tagger. Well, they made for, like, so many of those popular. Shield devices that no, I have a Shield. I think it's awesome, but. It was yeah. It was all for the shield and the shield tablets. Which yeah, they had a tablet. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone remember that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I remember. I remember things. the shield, but like, but I mean, no one, one, no, no one really bought them. But that's and there's that, so many of them. Yeah, and then the base chip itself is four years old. Right. Because yeah. like the base chip itself is already two years old, basically when the switch launched. Yeah. So I, I can see him definitely doing an upgrade. That said, I don't actually. I don't know. Maybe not. Because has Nvidia made a new chip of that? Not that we know of. But I yeah. Mean, so like, if, time, if if this system is, it would have to be something else. Like or I said, though, the, or it's like an exclusive custom chip. That's what I'm saying. It's going to be like a custom chip that they work in tandem with Nintendo on for the Switch, not for other products. Only because their deal with Nintendo is making them a lot of money. Yeah, and I wonder if there's like a contract in place saying like, "Hey, you have." Unfo- to yeah, and unfortunately, course. NDAs and stuff like that, we really wouldn't know. I guarantee you, if they are working on a new chip, everyone on that is signed to extreme NDAs. Yeah, but the NDAs never stopped. I mean, look at the Pixel Three. <laughs> That's why we're getting rumors, and as we get closer and closer to a potential like uh, reveal date, those rumors are going to amplify. Moving on, Project Red. Need a little bit of help with Cyberpunk. Digital Scapes is assisting. Uh, what are they assisting with? Uh, I think they're just development. It says. Um, they're yeah, they're partnering with them. They just need uh, help. Digital Scapes specializes in multiplayer development, dev tools, assets, and cloud computing. They worked on Dying Light prototype and a few other games so they're a pretty solid company so like i actually really think that this is good for the game they just need help dude the game's probably so massive oh yeah they're just like hey we just need you to help us <laughs> do this yeah and they and they've worked on some pretty solid stuff before so they're getting a good team to work on it yeah all right what is this next story the kingdom Hearts story doobie all right so and yet another cash grab leave it to square enix uh, coming October 30th for $40, you can buy uh, the pretty much the collection of Kingdom Hearts 1.5 plus 2.5 and Kingdom Hearts 2.8 Final Chapter that Prologue. Is not, that is not a real name for a game. Boy, I'm, sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, you're right. It's Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 plus 2.5 Remix. No, 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 the it, next it, one. Oh, God. Oh, Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue. Why is it 2.8? Is that a movie? <laughs> Are you ready for this? Here we go. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 1.5 plus 2.5 Remix, which is a, which is the PS4 version of the PS3 collection of PS2 games, uh, includes Kingdom Hearts Final Mix, which is the first game's like final version, hopefully. Kingdom Hearts Re Chain of Memories, which is the PS2 remake of the Game Boy Advance game. So why why is it 2.8? I'm I'm getting there. You have to give me a second. Oh God. Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. That's the PS2 remake of the uh, what I think it was the PS3 remake of the Game Boy Advance game that takes place in between Kingdom Hearts One and Two. That's pivotal to the story because they're all pivotal. 
Kingdom Hearts 358 slash two days HD remastered cinematics, which is the three the DS game that was the lead up to Kingdom Hearts 2. Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix, which is the definitive version of Kingdom Hearts 2. Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep Final Mix, which is the definitive version of the PSP game that is the prologue to it. Kingdom Hearts, like the, the prequel. Kingdom Hearts Recoded HD Remastered Cinematics, which is, uh, I think, that was a DS game that was awful and really only had one plot point that you needed to know at the very end of that game for anything. Now we're at Kingdom Hearts 2.8, Final Chapter Prologue, which is Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance HD, which is the HD remake of the 3DS game that is the last game chronologically to happen that leads up to Kingdom Hearts 3. Then you have Kingdom Hearts 0.2 Birth by Sleep, a fragmentary passage, which is like the Kingdom Hearts 3 tech demo, which follows the one character from Birth by Sleep when they're in the darkness leading up to Kingdom Hearts 3, but it's like the tying point between those two. Why is it not named Kingdom Hearts 3? It's Kingdom Hearts 0.2. Because it's not Kingdom Hearts 3. It's the... (laughs) The tech demo, essentially, for three. Oh. This is and then, you have, and then you get yeah. Kingdom Hearts Cross Back Cover Movie, which is the movie version of the telling of the mobile game uh, that was on cell phones that is the super prequel that's way before everything, but also has important plot points that you need to know for Kingdom Hearts 3. And I now want to kill myself. So wait, why is it named HD 2.8? That's my question. <laughs> Because it's not three, it's the it's it's like the two point three. It's like the point three percent after two point five. <laughs> before we get to th- dude, Square Enix can fuck itself. That is insane. And leading into our Has next. Anyone story, like actually like does anyone actually know what the fuck is going on in this universe? You can watch a six hour lore video on YouTube, but if you don't want to do that, the next story is for you. If you want, when you buy Kingdom Hearts 3, you get a uh, recap video. We get five recap videos, which are said to be hours long, officially made by Square Enix, detailing everything that has happened until Kingdom Hearts 3. Wait, do you have to buy it? It comes with Kingdom Hearts 3. Oh, okay. But that's only if you're willing to throw in the time to watch what I'm assuming is at least five hours of video. Oh, my God. Before playing Kingdom Hearts 3. That's too the much. The story is so fucking convoluted, and I love the franchise. Like, I really that's, like the that's main That's kind of cool, though. But it's just, you had to own, like, eight different systems and play 12 different games, and there's only been two main games, like, numbered one and two. <laughs> this is the end of the trilogy. Like, the, the I think it's, like, the Seekers of Heart trilogy. So if you just this played... Not, this is in the end of Kingdom Hearts. Wait, so if you just played Kingdom Hearts 1 and Kingdom Hearts 2 and then Kingdom Hearts 3, you wouldn't know and you, you, know, you wouldn't you know what's going on? You will a ton of stuff. You'll have questions about why is this character here? Who is this character? When did this character become a good guy? When did this character become a bad guy? What the fuck is that character doing here? Who even is this guy and why are people talking to him like they know him? I think that's kind of cool though. It's like a little scavenger I mean, hunt. It would does make cool. sense too, having it all together. It would be cool if it didn't take 15 years in between games and yeah. they didn't put things on, not just like, it wasn't even like, okay, we're going to keep our stuff on Sony or keep our stuff on Nintendo. You had so, to have wait. a Game Boy Advance. You had to have a 3DS. Hold on. So, so these releases here are all being released in a package on PS4. So you can play in all these package. games this on is, PS4. Yeah, this is the complete, if you want to play everything, before jumping into Kingdom Hearts 3. Dude, I might buy it for and play bucks, it. And you sh- can buy it. It's a lot of content for 40 bucks. I might, bucks. I might buy it, play it, and stream the entire thing. And you, catch up to the story. I will guarantee you, though, if you start now, like when it comes out on October 30th, mind you, Kingdom Hearts 3 comes out in January. You've got about two months. And you've also got Red Dead coming out, and I know you. <laughs> you're going to drop Kingdom Hearts like a motherfucker for... <laughs> Red Dead, and you're never going to turn back because you'll just go back to Witcher 3 after you're done Red Dead <laughs> instead of going back to Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, it's so true. I think you just watch the five hour video. That's true. No, I might just skip all of it in general. <laughs> I mean, for 40 bucks, 
it is a big bang for your buck. And it's if the you first like time. the fucking whole entire series, I guess. I think it's coming. I like, know. Who wants to play a PSP remake of a remake, though? No, is it coming out on remake. Xbox as well? I can't remember. It's a movie. Yeah. Is, yeah, is this PS4. Hearts giant collection thing coming? It doesn't say. If it's oh coming. yes, it does. PS4 and Xbox One. Well, Kingdom Hearts Three is coming to Xbox. Oh One. no, then just PS4. It says. See, that's the thing. How do players who are want to play Kingdom Hearts Three on Xbox One supposed to play these games? But I'm also saying forty bucks for like what essentially is like ten games is People not bad. People who buy this game and only buy like one and two, they don't really care about the story. They just want to know a little bit of the story and then look at all the Disney characters and you know what I mean. They want to play Frozen. I want to play it. They got to let it go. I want to let it go. (laughs) Square Enix, let it go. (laughs) Yeah. Stop. Let this be the end. No more Kingdom Hearts. Just like let three be the final game. You did more than Valve did. You made a three. Just be happy with that. All right. Last story. Rocksteady's next title will be a new Batman Arkham game. Yay. Another. uh, I tell you what. I'm still playing Spider-Man. I haven't finished it yet. Game is so good, dude. Jerry, have you played it yet? Nope. You gotta get Spider Man, dude. It makes you feel like Spider Man. Yeah, this rumor is interesting. Um, I hope it's true because, like, Rock said, he does some solid work. And um, who made the last one? Uh, God, who made? Was it the like last Larian one? Studios or something? I'm trying to remember because Arkham City itself was not that great of a game. Um, and the, the PC port was just trash. What was the last one? Arkham City or Arkham Knight? Arkham, I'm sorry, Arkham Knight. Arkham City was great. Arkham Knight was trash. Oh, Rock said he made the last one. Did they? Yeah. Okay, so, I mean, it's no surprise that they'll keep you in doing it. But, uh, it's, it, this, this rumor kind of has me a little worried. Um, Why, wow, the last one was villain, dope. Main villain, Court of Owls. But Gotham being a living, breathing city in the vein of, like, Spider-Man's New York would be really awesome. Especially since they're going to go with the same idea of, like, weather and daytime. Yeah, no, the last one was dope. Yeah, maybe, like, 1.5. They're not, not going to do New York City, though, are they? It would be Gotham City. Yeah, they're going to do Gotham. But, like, I'm saying, like, if it, like, Arkham Knight did not feel that alive. Like, the city was kind of just, like... You know, it just didn't feel like the city. It just felt like here's the the map. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It didn't feel. Uh, yeah, you could drive your fucking Batmobile down the city, and there's like no cars. Yeah. So I mean, it's having. Um, I mean, imagine a Batman game, but with Cyberpunk City. That'd be so dope. Yeah. Something more parkour that. stuff, more stealth segments. Like I love this. Like they got Batman, a, really dude, they got stuff. a game to beat with Spider Man if they want to make a really good. Which is crazy because Spider-Man was essentially they had to beat Arkham Knight, but now they set the bar, and that's going to be really difficult to beat, in my opinion. Yeah, and then they're Traversing also like, this, like that, they're going to uh, need to do tunnels. You can bring the Batmobile down the tunnels and stuff like that. You know, well, the Batmobile will be transport only. Which, like, if that's the rumor, and I think that's because the worst parts of Arkham Knight were the the tank sections. It was so bad. Yeah, they were just not. It just wasn't fun. Yeah. Well, neither are like the MJ scenes with fucking Spider Man. They're so immodest. They got better. They got better. Did you beat it yet? No, not yet. Okay, like I said, the last MJ mission was actually I liked a lot. Open world Batman could be really cool though. Oh, oh hell sure. yeah! Open world Batman would be dope. I would. I would think that would be a little bit more fun than Spider Man. It yeah. would be different at least. Because I feel like they've been trying to do this open world Spider Man for like ten years. They did a, yeah, good, they they did a pretty it. good job with they the last one. And but, there's going to be more. But with oh, the Batman, I mean, with Spidey, you're a, you know, a snarky 20-year-old something. With Batman, you're a fucking grown. Like, it's going to be a little bit more brutal. It's just going to be more adult, which is going to be cool. I always find, like, I like Peter Parker. The Like, I, I, I like the stories of Peter Parker when he's, like, much young. Like, not when he's, like, 28, but, like, when he's, like, 17. I find like the teenage Peter Parker to be a more interesting character because he doesn't like it's balancing a lot of things. Where Batman, a young Batman sucks. Yeah, older Batman, old older Bruce, Bruce Wayne. Wayne, broken Bruce Wayne is always just more fun because it's a darker character. And he talks like this. You can't I'm have, Batman. You can't, 
You can't have a Batman without a Batman. A hey, Batman. Joker where is he? Harvey Dent. I mean, I, I would also love to have a Robin sidekick that you can send out. Robin, Batgirl, the like, Nightwing, like the sidekicks for Batman are, are like Red Hood. I or guess. if you could like play as um what's his name? The guy who creates uh the tools. Um what the fuck Alf- is not Alfred, Alfred. Uh, well, Alfred doesn't make the tools. No, that's uh, that's his butler. What's Morgan Freeman? Lucius Fox. Yes. Yeah, yeah you could Fox, play him, yeah. like gather resources that you give him, and then you can create fucking any tool that you want. Telltale. I mean, Telltale Batman did a great job when they, uh, spoiler alert, killed the uh, Lucius Fox. Oh! Is that canon? Uh, in the Telltale games it is. But then again, Telltale, like, their Joker peace. is really interesting, actually. But rest in peace. <laughs> How canon is it? <laughs> no, no, nothing. Even DC doesn't know what's canon anymore when they keep rebooting the universe every two years. New Fifty Two, anyone? New Fifty Two. I mean, hey, I saw hey. the new Venom, and it was like it was cool, but it was completely different because uh, I cause saw Venom. Rights with Sony and stuff. It, like oh, the, the oh, origination story. Oh, yeah, the origination three? story is completely different. Oh yeah, all I'll say with Venom was the. The villain was meh. Villain, the yeah. Fighting was okay. The love interest was eh. It, it wasn't. It's not a bad movie. I don't think it's as bad as people are making it to be. I like the love interest more actually. Which it was it was love. meh, but it was like, okay, this is actually kind of a realistic love interest instead of yeah. They did the, MJ and Spider Man. They yeah. did the one thing I wanted Venom to do. And they nailed Eddie and Venom's relationship together. Mm. They nailed the writing between the characters. They And Tom Hardy is charismatic as hell. I think when it's all said and done, because he signed on for two more movies. Ooh. I was going to say, this is a, to three. Yeah, this is a, totally open towards they're trying to make this a thing. So maybe this is the Batman setup. Begins so then. And then the next two are the best movies ever made. And we'll get Carnage eventually. And then if they decide. That, that was the end of it. Up, yeah, no, I mean, the end of it was, hey, here's Carnage. Hint, Woody hint, Harrelson. Let us, make us, let us make a new movie. By the way, it's Woody Harrelson. It's Woody Harrelson who plays a really good psycho. Uh, that's kind of cool. I would love it. I'm, I'm like, that's what got me excited. But the first... That's like, like, it was, it was yeah. all right. Yeah. I'm going to bash it and say it, it was, was a really was, awful movie. It was, it was campy. It was kind of dumb. It was fun. It was just... Especially yeah. Venom. My question is, how good is Tom Hardy as Venom? He's yeah, like Tom my, Hardy did he's a good my job. Favorite, good. He's my favorite actor, I think. No, Tom, Tom Hardy nailed that role. Like, he did a really good job. All right, cool. Yeah, it was much better than, uh, what was the kid from uh, he, like, that 70s show? Like, that was entirely why to watch the movie. Like, he did do a good job, like, especially as that character yeah. and the relationships he had to display. All right, good. Yeah, and the writing for Venom, the character itself, while the writing for the movie in general. Should I go like, see it or should I just wait till it comes out? I think you can wait till cable, but it's definitely, I think it's a movie that's going to do a lot better once it becomes easier to consume for people. I once they're seeing it theater. I mean, I think all movies are like that nowadays. I don't remember the last time I've actually wanted to go. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of problems came from like their fake reviews from fans of uh, the Lady Gaga fans. Oh, right. Because A Star is Born came out, so they bombarded like review sites with fake. I like, wonder re- if that actually affected things. I don't like I don't I don't get what their point was because their point was like oh we're gonna make people go see a Star Is Born instead of Venom because we're gonna bash Venom and, and my you're main talking thing is, about Lady Gaga fans do you really think, fans, so you really the, think the audience the audience who would see Venom is the same audience that would say no nah, let's go to Star Is Born instead yeah. no it's not no, that's a smart they're not the brightest bunch no they're not and that's nothing to all you Gaga heads out there listening. <laughs> We got that Gaga fan base, you know, we gotta make them happy. All right, that's the end of the show. It is uh I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video and also subscribe if you want to stay updated on No Life Podcast and more. We'll catch y'all tomorrow for the tech portion of the show. Bye bye. Say bye, Doobie. See ya. Peace.